This is a coffee table. No way, man, that's a dining table. All right, it's a coffee table and a dining room table. Let's say you're sitting at your couch. Maybe you wanna work on the computer, you wanna have something to eat. Well, you just lift the top up and now it's a time at, at table height. But let's say you wanna have friends over for dinner. You live in a small apartment, you don't have another table. Well, this becomes your dining room table. You just open it up. And now it seats four comfortably, two with social distancing. But that's not all. This table also has another trick up its sleeve. Turn it back into a dining room table. Sorry, turn it back into a coffee table. If I just tilt this table over a little bit, I'll show you. It's got this really nice drawer here, so you can put maybe your, your laptop, your phone, whatever, TV remote, whatever you want in there. Let's say you've got something you want to keep kind of a secret. You just turn this little knob here, pull it out. Secret drawer! Oh man! This is a coffee table. And today, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this. I began the project by sanding these two sheets of plywood and pre-finishing them. This will save a lot of time later down the road. While the finish was drying, I made the template for the radius cuts to the front and back of the table. I used this flexible plastic rod to get the nice arc. Using my jigsaw, I slowly and carefully cut out the arc before cutting the jig off the plywood using my circular saw. One sheet of plywood had this really nice figure that I wanted to feature, so I laid out my cuts appropriately. I've taken to using blue painter's tape to help reduce blowout. I know some say this doesn't work, but I've had really good results. After rough cutting all the pieces, I traced the arc from the tabletop I made onto the tabletop pieces, then rough cut them with the jigsaw. Then I clamped the template down and using a flush cut trim bit on my router, finished off this cut. Because I wanted the two table pieces to be an exact match, I used the first tabletop piece as the template for the second piece. I ironed on banding to the back of the table pieces, but the front and sides I glued these strips of maple I milled, but banding would also work here. I don't have any banding clamps, but I have found that blue tape works great in its place. After the glue had dried, I removed the tape before sanding the edges flush so the front veneer strips could be glued on. Again blue tape came to the rescue. After the glue dried, I used the trim bit on my router to trim the edges flush to the tabletop and the bottom. I gave the banding a quick sand with 220 grit sandpaper to complete the trimming process. To lay out the butler tray hinges, I lined the tabletops together with the inside of the table facing up. I then measured where I wanted the hinges to be and traced them in their positions. To router the recesses out, I suggest scoring the veneer with a plywood, then use a flat bottom trim bit to carefully router out the recesses. This takes time and patience, but with care, you can get this right. I cheated. I used my 3D printer to print out this jig that worked awesome. All I had to do now was clamp the jig in place, get the depth right, and plow away with the router. The jig worked perfectly. There are six recesses that needed to be cut, so this made the job much faster and much easier. The hinge pins are lower than the body of the hinge, so this part of the recess needed to be cut deeper. This was done for all six recesses. Next, I simply lined everything up and inserted the hinges. I was really happy with how well this worked out. I used a large drill bit to find the center of each hole before pre-drilling the holes for the screws. Be sure your screws are not too long, you don't want them poking through the top of your table. This double drill bit trick works really well at taking the guessing out of the centering the screws and the holes.
I wanted to grain match the front drawer panel with the table front panel, so I cut them from the same piece of plywood. For the dado joints, I first tried using my router, but I found the dados to be a bit too loose. I finished the rest of the dados on my table saw. I don't have a dado blade, so I just took multiple passes with a regular blade. This resulted in nice tight dados. The table frame side panels also need to be rabbit cut to accept the bottom panel of the table body. I put the router away at this time, so I just cut them on the table saw. This baby gate I made years ago unwittingly became the donor of for the legs of the table. My kids are old enough to survive a fall down the stairs now, so I, we don't really need this. I used my router table to route out the dados on the table legs. I used a 3 8 inch router bit and took two slow passes. The bottom of the dados are rounded off. Instead of trying to chisel these out, I cheated again by notching out the bottom corners of the table side panels. To do this, raise my table saw all the way up and trim the corners away. Raising the blade all the way up will reduce overcut. Now when assembled, this notch will hide the rounded corners of the dado. To assemble the table body, I put wood glue in the dados before knocking the panels in place. I assembled the sides before gluing the back panel in place. This took some care because the plywood is weakened at the dados. Glue does offer a little lubrication. After it was all put together, I made sure the legs were square and left the glue to dry. While the glue was drying, I cut out the table and drawer bottoms. The table bottom panel was glued into the rabbit joint cut earlier. After everything was lined up, I nailed the bottom in place. I double checked the table for square and let everything set up. I then assembled the drawers. I basically nailed the sides together before gluing the bottom in place. My original design had two separate drawers. I didn't like how this meant you could see the split drawers when it was pulled out, so I ripped everything apart and rebuilt the drawers. I cut a groove in the top drawer side panel and slid that into place. The bottom drawer needs to fit inside the top drawer sides, so I had to rip that apart and rebuild it too. For the drawer slides, I intended to use plywood as wood sliders, but this made the drawers stick and kind of wobbly, so I just used side mounted drawer slides. This was a bit of wasted time, but I gave it a shot. I wanted to get the materials for uh, making the mechanism and I went to a local uh, scrap yard and I actually just pulled a bunch of stuff out of there. Um, this is a bed frame. I'm going to use this as uh, basically as angle iron. And this is uh, from an old folding table. Um, these are just the legs. I'm going to use the square tubing. But yeah, I'm going to try to see how this goes. And actually while I was there, I found this guy in uh, lying in the dirt. So it's a, it's a jackal. That's, that's for another time. I cut down the metal using my grinder. I was able to get all the parts I needed from these scrapyard finds. To make it possible to fit the bolts into the mech arms, I cut the ends of the square tubing on a 45 and then drilled a quarter inch hole on each end. The assembly was pretty straightforward, and as an added bonus, holes already drilled in the bed frame came in handy when attaching the mechanism to the tabletop. I marked out the hole locations in the mech support panel and pre-drilled these holes before drilling the holes out with a quarter inch drill bit. The mech arms were then bolted to the mech supports with the quarter inch bolts and nylock nuts. The washers are the same thickness as the angle iron to allow the angle iron to fit beside the panel so the mechanism can close completely. You can see here the importance of the washers. To attach the mechanism to the tabletop, I first dry fit the mechanisms into the table body, then place the tabletop onto the frame. I position the tabletop in place, then mark the locations of the mechanisms. With the tabletop flipped over, I drew a line to help line up the mechanisms on the tabletop. 
The mechanism was then pried out of the frame and screwed into place using 5 8 inch screws. Again, it's crucial here that you ensure your screws are not too long. After both mechanisms were attached, the whole thing was flipped over and dry fit back in place to test out. Figure out the proper height of the back supports. I propped the tabletop, making sure the table was flat and level. The back supports were cut out on the table saw and then trimmed down the jigsaw. Next, the back supports were clamped into place so they could be marked to determine their install location. After the parts were bolted together and re-dry fit, the back stiffener was installed. This will help the tabletop from sagging when in the open position. I took everything apart so I could glue and screw the back stiffener to the back supports. So I've got it basically all put together. I had the top on and everything, and everything seems to be working fine. Um, and I just have to figure out the drawer front. I've got a little mock-up of how of how I would like to make it work, but basically the top drawer um, is gonna pull out like this, and then the bottom drawer will pull out later, and that's the that's the secret drawer. And I've just got to figure out a way to, I, you know, I'm gonna sit, attach the drawer front right to the bottom drawer and the top drawer is going to have have the mechanism so that's the only thing i'm really having to figure out and then after that it's just doing the final finishing and uh i think it i think it's done i think it'll be done which is cool i measured the location and drilled out the hole for the knob bolt and then transferred the location to the top drawer front I marked out the locations for the recess and the latch location on the drawer and the drawer front. To make it easier to router out the recesses, I drilled a shallow hole to insert the router bit. Then I routed out the recess out carefully and did the same thing on the top drawer front. Home hard to find there didn't have a latch, so I made one myself. Using a vise and a hammer, I smashed this thing out. Then the catch was installed into the drawer front. I use bolts here because there isn't enough meat left in the plywood for wood screws. I then transferred the drawers over to the drawer front to line everything up. I drilled oversized holes into the front of the bottom drawer. The extra large holes will help with any adjustments that need to be made later down the road. You can see here how the bottom drawer is connected to the false drawer front. For the latch assembly, I cut a number eight machine screw to length and then threaded it into the knob. Next, a washer to rest up against the false drawer front to prevent scratching. The latch was held in place with nuts. I cut the latch from a small corner brace, but any piece of steel would do. I used some thread lock for the final assembly so things didn't loosen off over time. This all works pretty well. Notice how the drawers are sloppy and stiff. This is why I switched to just using off the shelf drawer slides. Now all that was left to do was the final assembly and gluing and fastening all the parts into place. For the mechanical parts, I gave them a couple coats of black paint to freshen them up. To attach the table pieces to the frame, I glued the bottom piece to the frame, then screwed that into place. 
I took into account that the table would likely be lifted from this part at some point, so I wanted to make sure that it could hold up to that. For the top piece, I glued between the two pieces, then screwed them to each other from below using 7 8 inch screws. I should have installed the stretcher before the final assembly, but I was able to move things around so I could get at everything I needed to. The stretcher and the frame bottom panel really hold the table together, so it shouldn't be skipped. All that's left was a little light sanding and one final coat of finish. I love how the figure and the plywood turned out, it really gives it that added character. So I'm generally happy with the way that this turned out. I really like the shape and the sort of the feel of, of the table. It's good and sturdy. I like how this figure turned out. This looks so good. Um, I added a couple of things to the table, like I said in, in the video there. Um, I did add these um, side drawer slides, side mounted drawer slides instead of uh, those wood ones. It just makes the drawer a little bit easier and nicer to, to pull out. Um, another thing that I added was these to help lift um, the table with lifting. I added these, uh, these bungee cords on the sides. Um, they were pretty easy. All I basically did was I put the bungee cord on this corner bolt and then down to down to the front one. Pretty straightforward how to do that. I intended on having this video ready a lot sooner than than it had been ready. Um, what happened was halfway through doing my uh, my editing, my computer completely crapped out. Like completely, I actually had to buy a whole new one and replace it. Um, I was able to get my video footage, which was really great, so um, didn't lose any of my data. But it really set me back quite a bit. I just want to take a second and thank all the people who've bought the plans over over the past few years from me and helped support my projects and you know convince my wife that what I'm doing isn't a complete waste of time. Um, and uh, you know, as, as a creator, there is no better compliment than knowing that somebody likes your creation so much that they wanna build one themselves. So yeah, that big thumbs up uh, to you guys and everybody who's done that. And also big thumbs up to the people who give me the, the likes and subscribe. Um, that really helps YouTube know that people are interested in my videos. Maybe more people will be able to watch them. So um, that's a good and easy free way to support my, my uh, channel is just to you know hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And I do have a few more projects that uh, I really like to get started on I've got to redo my my garage completely it's really not set up well for filming and for working so I'm gonna redo that but after that's done I'm thinking about maybe building a, uh, a hidden bunk bed or maybe the hidden bed desk with in a queen size I don't know what do you guys think anyway to the next video I guess I'm the how-to dad I'll show you how to do something else later thanks for watching <laughs>